Hi, my name is Eric Sogamonian, and I am just interviewed with the Keith Andrews Network, who is a great, a great TV show, and I think you guys should follow him. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and I'm here with Eric Sago. Eric Sago is the founder of the word. Delete the word. He can't. He doesn't want to hear. He doesn't want to hear the word, and doesn't like the, the phrase "you can't." So, as a founder of the word, delete the word "can't." What can you tell us about your company? Well, thank you first for having me, and my company is basically trying to help a whole group of people, whether you're disabled or not. It tries to emphasize the fact that if you really want something, you definitely can, no matter what it is, and no matter who stands in your way, you should, you could always just shut them through and, and uh, stay clear of the goal and no, absolutely. And for me, every, every time somebody says you can't do something, it gives me more motivation just to go out and prove to them you can still do it. So that's, for me, the word can't doesn't exist. That's what I love to hear. No, absolutely. Now, I was told by a friend that you were on uh, New York One. What uh, I would like to hear your story. So back in October, I walked around all of Staten Island, which was very difficult. Uh, it started at 5 o'clock in the morning with, I, I'm sorry, it started at 5 o'clock in the morning at St. George, St. George Terminal with Max Rose, who is our congressman. And he helped me kind of kick things off and I began walking. Um, I that's when I started walking. He helped me. I met him and his his uh, assistant with my parents, and they shipped me off until I started walking. So I took my phone and I GPS, you know, where I GPS every minute because I don't know that. The island off the top of my head. So it, I fin by the end I finished. I want to say around like three o'clock, two thirty, three o'clock, and my like I I was very sore. I was about to collapse until my parents until I finished. Then my parents drove us uh, back home after I finished my my cousin and my cousin's uh, kid actually came with signs that says congratulations Eric and that was just like very amazing and I felt very accomplished and during my walk actually I had to walk in the woods sometimes because we, this island does not have a lot of crossroads crosswalks so it was either next to cars or in the woods. And I chose the woods because I thought it would be safer. And in the woods, I actually saw a coyote, which was, I was afraid to even do anything or even to move. Because if the coyote sensed me, then I, God forbid, I would not, I would not be here today. Um, and a couple of minutes after I saw the coyote, I was walking in the park in New York One. Um, like they were setting up the, the equipment. We were interviewing at the park from the beginning to the end of the park. And 
it was a very nice, nice interview. I liked it. They said they would want to do it again when I do my next vlog, which hopefully it's in October. Um, and then later that night when I finished, we finished at a smoothie place called Ono Bowls. It's at the Staten Island Mall. And uh, as I lie was there from the admin and Again, I was able to give my little speech. I was able to, like, all my all my followers were there. Some some people I don't know were there. They would just came out to hear my speech, to hear me talk, and I even had my own smoothie, which is called the Sogo Saver, and I have the recipe on my phone, and it's very delicious. It's like if you were at if you were at a beach during the summer, so so relaxing. So that that day was a complete blast for me. No, absolutely. Now the next question I was going to ask you is, what influenced you to start your own um, foundation? Well, so all my life, all in public school, I was badly bullied because of my disability and the fact that I have a speech impediment due to my disability. And, you know, I was sitting alone at lunch every day. I was, as soon as I came home, I came to my room, I did my work, listened to sad music, I was crying. And honestly, I don't want anyone ever to feel like that. Uh, ever whether you're in school or your work, your kid, you're an adult, teenager, whatever. I don't want anyone to ever feel like that. And most of them told me that most of the people that bullied me told me that if I don't get my act together, they're, like there's so many things in the world that I cannot do, like go to college or finish high school. But I proved them wrong because I have not only a college diploma, but I have a bachelor's, a bachelor's diploma, which nobody even thought that I that was possible for me. So I did uh, the impossible for them. No, absolutely. Now the next question I was going to ask you is, what motivates you every single day to do what you do? Well, the fact that I always tell my parents, I always tell my friends, I always tell people who I speak to on the basis that I'm planning to walk around the island, I'm planning to walk around Manhattan. Eventually, I'm planning to walk across America, actually. And a lot of people are tell me, oh, you can't do that. You, you're limited. You're your legs don't don't work properly and I always want to tell them no I can't do it because I mean I walked around Staten Island how many people can really say that and I, I had so many odds when I walked around Staten Island that those people that were against me gives me the motivation to keep going forward. And when I keep going forward, my friends actually motivate me because they all know that I can, they believe in me uh, from the get-go, they believed in me, they believe that I can. They, uh, they help me with my organization. And I just feel like they're leader that if I say something on Facebook or if I say something to a person, I should, I, sh I should stand by my own words. I shouldn't just say it and not do anything about it because that's not how life should work. If you say something, you should do it. So I say all of these nice, encouraging sayings and by my subconscious, I not only do I have to go out and physically do it, 
but I want to. I don't want people to believe that I am a phony at all. And I always think that if I'm able to do what other people think it's impossible, then I can overcome so many challenges in life, whether it comes to uh, location, jobs, um, just about anything, honestly. No, absolutely. Now, what is the goal that you're trying to reach? Are we speaking about uh, fundraising wise or about just personal life? Personal? Well, both. So for, for fundraising, I'm planning to, uh, like there's no limit to as much money as I could really get, hopefully. Um, and me and my team are actually planning to, with all that money that, that's being donated, we plan on uh, giving the proceeds to an to a organization that actually helps with mus with muscular dystrophy that takes like DNA apart and tries to analyze the DNA specifically. Cause I mean, as soon as you analyze the DNA, you find out what exactly causes it. It's somewhat an easier process to find a cure once you find out what what causes it. So for my for the nonprofit, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what the goal is for the nonprofit. My personal goal. When it comes to jobs, honestly, I do not have right now a specific goal in mind. Uh, but other than that, personally, my goal is to walk across America in a few years because that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm just very excited every single day of that. But it takes a long time to to process that because you need like clothes, you need press releases, you need media coverage from every state and we're going we're gonna to start from California and walk to, walk to New York. So it's going to take a while. True, but you don't have to walk, you know, you, you can take a boat, you can take, you know, an RV. There's other things you can do too to be stand out to be different. That's absolutely true. You could take different modes of transportation. Uh, we were actually, me and my team were actually thinking about getting an RV. We still might get an RV, but we, right now it's still kind of in like the works, so we don't have everything set up yet. All right. Now, next question is, let's see, find something good. What is your biggest weakness? Honestly, my be, uh, my uh, my biggest weakness right now, since I'm 23, I would have to say is my ability to, believe it or not, my ability to trust people. Now, the reason I say that is because I trust a lot of people, uh, almost everybody, because um, I want to believe that all people out there are good people. And if that does not turn out to be true, then it could hurt you physically, but mentally, emotionally. So I, tr I don't want to ever look at that that way, I want to always look at it as, you know, the pe people are always good, people are always positive, they're always warm, they're always helping. But again, unfortunately, it doesn't always play out that way. No, that's very true. Now, what is your biggest achievement that you reach in your life? Uh, I mean, as of right now, honestly, the biggest achievement that I have is walking across Staten Island. 
Now that doesn't that might not sound to some people like that's a big achievement, but for me that is because I've been planning this walk around Staten Island for for um I so the walk around Staten Island happened in October. I've been planning it since between June and July, so a couple months before I started walking. And every time I spoke about it to someone, they always tell me, "Oh, you can't do this. You you know your your legs aren't good. You are you're limited. You have to take it slow. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't do this." And when I when I heard that, it kind of I want them, it kind of made me want to walk even more just to prove them wrong, just to prove them that I can do anything I really want to. And walking around Staten Island, I was able to meet new people. I was able to be on TV actually in the newspaper. I was in the newspaper because of the walk of Staten Island. And I love the people that the people that uh, did not know me before. The people that know me know me as the kid that walked around Staten Island. So I'm very pleased with that. I never in my life thought I I would be I would ever be able to do anything like that. You bring up an interesting point, but it's not good to have people label you. You know, you just mentioned you said you're when people know you as the kid who walks around Staten Island. You know, for so someone would label me as, oh, you're the kid with a disability at the talk show. I would find that more as a pet peeve than actually, you know, a compliment. Now, if someone said to you, you're the person who's an inspiration, who has a disability and walks who wants to walk around Staten Island. Now that's more of an inspiration than that saying, Oh, you're just the kid who walks around Staten Island. Well, what, what I mean by that when I say I'm the, they, when, cause I, cause I've seen a couple of people around the college of Staten Island saying I'm the guy who walked around Staten Island. Like they know my story now. Because of like SI Live in New York One, how um, I was always bullied and how I had muscular dystrophy, and I'm um, like they all say that I'm, I inspired them to be better, to be bigger than who they already are, and to show them that, you know what, if I say I can do something, then you know what, nothing's gonna limit me to, to be anything but great like I can't do anything I really want to doesn't matter what disability or doesn't matter what I have I still can't do anything so a lot of people tell me because I'm the guy who walked around Staten Island and my and with like the disability I inspired them which I mean it just feels so great to be able to inspire people and I just love the whole idea of it. Oh, absolutely. And now you mentioned about your uh, plan on walk around this October. Personally, I would wait until there's a vaccine, number one. And the way things are going, that may be a possibility, walk around, you know, Staten Island. But, yeah, I want to get my hopes up. I, you should make a game plan where you have a plan A, but you should also have a plan B at the same time. The biggest thing is because until there's a vaccine, things will not go back to normal. And things probably will not go back to normal because things will all, things after this will be different. But I do applaud that you are an inspiration for people with disabilities, that you are making a statement, and the word can't doesn't even exist. Uh, wrapping up our talk show, how can people follow you on social media? You know, are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Um, well, uh, yes, I'm actually on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even on LinkedIn at uh, 
like my company's side is the lead the word can't on all social media platforms. My personal site is Eric Sogo on Facebook. Um, we even have like a, a website for the nonprofit, which is uh, the lead the word can't like all in one word, no apostrophe, delete the word can't.org. No, absolutely. Now wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I just want to say thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spank. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi. I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network.